Uh, thank you all for being here. I am Andrew Uth, for those who I don't know. Uh, I'm the executive director here at ICA San Diego. Um, we are also here with Narciso Martinez, uh, who is the artist. You can get a little round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. We had a long drive down from Long Beach today, um, where Narciso is, um, is living, and he's originally from Oaxaca. He'll tell you all about everything. I won't take up too much time, but I do want to welcome you all. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us. This is our first See You Saturday, which we're really excited about. Yay to See You Saturday, and to our team for putting all this on. Um, thank you all. I know we're kind of running through because we're still getting things prepared, so forgive the, um, forgive the movement. I won't talk too much because we're a little bit late, so I want to make sure that Narciso has enough time to talk about the work, and then we're going to do another tour at 6 o'clock, if you make it all the way to 6 o'clock, um, to, to see more. Uh, there will be lots of events happening today, so right at 4 is the Art of a Lawn show in the, in the backyard in our garden space. And then we have a, um, a presentation with Edra Soto, who is right here. Hi, Edra, um, who is our current artist in residence. Um, and then we also have another talk, um, another walkthrough with, with Narciso, and then a party. So if you can stay for four hours, you'll enjoy. There's lots of drinks, food, music, fun. I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you all for being here, Narciso. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me. Yes. Yeah, and, um, I think it's special for me to be here in San Diego, and you should know why. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Can we turn? But um, music? yeah, thanks. Where's Andre? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Where, where to start? Yeah. I mean, um, we we were having a lot of conversations in the car today about sort of your history and your relationship okay. with San Diego, and the more okay. treacherous conversation <laughs> okay. of what it means to come to San Diego and then ultimately to LA and what it meant for you to be, I'm sort of guiding you here, right, what, right. It, what it okay. meant to be a farm worker yourself, okay. um, what it meant to connect with uh, the land, with okay. the people, um, and sort of representing those people in your uh, work. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm kind of new, even though I've been doing this for like four years, but every, I feel like a new person every time I do a talk. So um, I guess you can just start from there. Like I, I am originally from Oaxaca, Mexico, if you guys didn't know. Um, I came to the United States when I was about 20 years old. And um, so I didn't speak any English. So I had to, I decided I want to go to, to school and learn English because I was really interested in, um, in the movies and the music. But uh, little did I know that I was going to get also interested in school, actually, because when, when I was in Mexico, I didn't go to school. I got kicked out of ninth grade or something. Um, but when I, when I was here, I, I really, uh, my teachers, my English teachers made me believe that actually I could actually do something. So I believed them, and I decided to, to continue my education here. So I did my uh, high school in an adult school, and then I went to a community college to learn, um, to continue my uh, general education classes. It was here where, um, what I thought I was really good at, science and math, and I really wanted to study uh, science. I think I wanted to be a biologist or something. But um, unfortunately, I couldn't work. Uh, at that time, um, I was one of the top uh, students um, in the biology class that I was chosen to work uh, as a lab assistant. So I was really excited, and um, unfortunately, I didn't have documents then, so I couldn't work. So my life was like disappointing at that moment. I was like, maybe what's the point of going to school? So in meanwhile, I was finishing all my general education classes, so I happened to take an art history class. I learned about artists like Van Gogh and Millet, who painted. Um, poor people or people in the villages. I grew up in a small village and uh, I really thought that I could paint like these artists and paint people from my hometown. Because uh, it's not like art was new to me because I've been doing draw drawing since I was a kid. But uh, I never went to art school or, any, and, uh, or had any formal training. So I was like, okay, maybe I can go to art school, learn how to paint and how to draw and draw people from my hometown. I don't have to be, you know, I don't need documents to, to paint. and. Um, so yeah, I, that's when I decided to go to art school. And um, it was 2009 when I transferred to Cal State Long Beach. And um, up to this point, I was financing my studies on my own because it was not expensive. Like adult school was 
pretty much free. All you only had to do was pay for food and rent and books. Um, but, I, but when I transferred to Cal State Long Beach, I, after the first semester, I really ran out of money. So I, was, I had been working like in different things like busing tables, warehouses, uh, washing cars, and um, I did all kinds of jobs. But uh, I was able to manage paying up to community college. But then it got more expensive, and I didn't have money. So I, at one point, I thought I should stop going to school. But my brothers, who happened to live and, and work in Washington State, they suggested I should work in the fields with them. And they will help me out with like rent money and food. So that's what I did. I went to Washington State. I took a leave of absence and then I went to Washington State. I worked for like uh, for the whole semester and the summer and I came back to school and I decided to do that every every um, every season. So every time that school would stop, I would travel to Washington State, work in the fields and come back. So I did that until from 2009 to 2012 when I graduated with a bachelor's degree in art. So to that point, up to that point, for me, it was very technical. I was learning how to draw and how to paint, very exciting. I was making enough money to pay for tuition. So I still owe some money, so I decided to go back to the fields, work, um, and I pay my debts. And believe it or not, I was still like not speaking English. Like I felt like I needed more. <laughs> so I decided to go to, um, to graduate school, uh, remembering my teachers um, advice that I needed to just keep taking classes. So I decided to apply to grad graduate school. I applied to a few schools. I didn't get in in any of the schools that I applied to. And one time I visited my, my friends here in Long Beach and um, I visited my professors and, and one of them suggested I should, I should apply to Cal State Long Beach for the graduate program. So luckily for me, I never stopped painting when I was up there. Those three years that I was in, in the fields, I was, doing I was doing studies. I would go out in the fields and just paint, do uh, planar paintings. And, uh, and I used all the work to apply for graduate school. So I did, I did get in the program. When I graduated in 2012, I was, um, I, I was, an, I was still an undocumented student. So DACA, um, well, the DREAM Act hasn't passed yet, so I, I had to pay everything on my own. But when I went back to the graduate program, uh, the DREAM Act has, has passed already, and undocumented students under the AB 540 law could actually apply for financial aid. So I, I got financial aid throughout the graduate program, plus the money I was making in the field, so I didn't have it, I didn't have it that hard this time. It was, <laughs> it was okay this time. But, um, so yeah, I graduated in 2018 with a, bachelor's, uh, with a master's degree in drawing and painting, and it was, in this period of time when I turned oil painting, uh, I stopped doing oil painting and started working um, on cardboard, on cardboard boxes. It was not like, um, it, I guess it was like a series of uh, events that led to the cardboard boxes. First, when I was in undergrad, I was doing uh, studies, because um, I remember the assignments were like, we needed to make 20 or 40 different uh, studies, and I didn't have money to buy 20 different canvases or panels. A lot of students were using panels. So I cut a lot of cardboard, and I just saw them, and I, that's where I did my paintings. And then I went to, I saw a show, I was at Cerritos College, I believe. Uh, one, one of the artworks there was made in cardboard. So that's, I fell in love with the cardboard, and then after I graduated, I did um, a bunch of other works in cardboard, on cardboard, when I was in the field, working in the fields during 2012 to 2015, I was using my sister's um, garage as a studio, but she would also go to Costco to get produce, and I would cut out the bottom part of the box and do the drawings there. And uh, when I was in graduate school, critique got really rough with my old paintings, <laughs> and I decided to start paintings, <laughs> to start doing old paintings, and I wanted to do something that, um, that was that something that I was used to, like doing drawings on cardboard. That's something that nobody told me like that was right or that was wrong. I was just doing drawings on cardboard. So I, one time I was with my brother, working with my brother, and he sent me to get pizza at Costco. So I went to Costco. I saw this box. I liked it. I landed in my studio, and then I did this. Um, I did draw this um, banana man on this banana box, and that was the first like drawing that I did. Uh, uh, I guess on cardboard that was shown at, a, at my class that included the labels because at this time I didn't cut out the labels. 
So I showed it to my class. They were excited about the ideas, and uh, it just it, from there it just took off. Uh, I liked the key word that my committee member said because uh, everybody liked it, right? But then one of my committee members said something like, "Oh, wait a minute. We don't know how serious Narciso is with this work." So for me, that was the key word, seriousness. So I started collecting boxes and um, did a bunch of portraits on boxes. I put together many multiple boxes and did multiple um, figure compositions. And we uh, eventually, I, I did uh, sculptures. And now we're here. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we have, thank you very much for that background. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's really helpful to give a lot of context around what we're presenting in this space. Maybe um, we could just kind of do, because we only have about 10 minutes left before the next oh, cool. item thing. So we can do like a quick little um, walkthrough and, you know, just this piece in the middle, I think, is an important piece to also recognize, too, um, not only because of what you were saying about the boxes, but also just the whole system itself. Um, in being a system of transportation, mm -hmm. of moving produce, and kind of recognizing both the farm workers, but also the systems of right. the sort of structures of getting food to our plates and to our grocery stores and all of that. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I guess I can add to, um, I, I did this piece at the Long Beach Museum of Art during a residency. They, they invited me to do there. And, um, uh, I, I just thought of the space that I had there because I had like a small cubicle at my school, but there they gave me a huge space and I was able to like have all my boxes everywhere. So that's, um, it's also close to the port where all the, the junk that we buy mm -hmm. gets to. So I was like, uh, this is a good uh, time to, to get precisely that, the idea of how our produce is transported from one place to another. And I happened to work at a produce warehouse in LA and I used to create this order for different grocery stores where we put the produce on a pallet and then we'll ship it to different places. So that's where the idea came from. Mm -hmm. the I, got the, I actually got the pallet from that same place I worked. And um, so yeah, that's, that's the result. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I know that we have these portraits also on the wall too, which are um, called ghost, ghost portraits, mm -hmm. um, which sort of reflect both the process of printing, um, which um, as you print in, with line of cuts, uh, every time you do the print, it decreases the quality of it, um, which is why it's called a ghost print. But mm -hmm. there's also the quality of the people themselves almost being ghosts. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was working in the fields, I, I realized that uh, uh, if not all, most of the farm workers did not have a, a valid social security uh, number and um, and they were pretty much i feel like they were pretty much working um, as ghosts right like uh, especially during the pandemic that farm workers were deemed essential and there was a lot of a lot of um, noise around them cheering them up but uh, but after the pandemic i felt like it, everything went back to the same where farm workers are still continuing like living under the table and the shadows Sort of like ghosts, we're here, but we're not here. And so that's how I got the idea of the ghost portraits. Awesome. There is, um, I, I want you to kind of pay attention if you can, before we head into the next room, there's a, a portrait on the other side of this, um, sort of facing the door there. And the woman, um, you told me that you've used her portrait a lot. Mm -hmm. And sort of as we move into the next room, I know you guys can look at it now or look at it later, um, but I also wanted you to talk a little bit more about sort of your relationship with the people who are in the fields and um, the people that you're you're representing on the walls, your personal relationship. And I think we can move into the other room okay. so you can see the rest <laughs> of the show. It's a short tour. We'll do it. We'll do okay. a longer cool. one yeah. next. <laughs> yeah. As people move in. <laughs> Try to make some room so more people can come in.
All right, I think they're going to make it. Anyway, right. maybe we could kind of get into that topic of, um, of your relationship with, with, with the, the workers and the people that you're representing. Yeah, when I, was, uh, when I first started working in the fields, it was, it was more about the money, right? I, I was there for the money. I didn't like, really pay attention to who were around me except for the group of people that, that I used to work with, my brother, um, his, his wife, and a group of friends, right? Who was the lady who was in the front mm -hmm. of the drawing? Um, and um, it's interesting because after undergraduate, uh, because of the graduate program and, and the research paper that I had to do, I really needed to find a way to, I guess I, I needed to find out more about my coworkers at that time. And I didn't know because I used to hang out only with my brother and a group of friends. And when I decided that I, was, I wanted to go on my own, on my own I left my brother's group and I got me a car and I went to different orchards to look for a job on my own. I found out that I was really disconnected with my community because they, they, we couldn't even communicate, I guess, properly. I, I thought I was like an academic who went to school and like, I would go to the fields and I would see these other uh, people who couldn't even like communicate with me because they would um, turn around when, as soon as I would like accidentally bring an English word or like an, a certain accent. And it was, it was so, so um, messed up, for lack of a word. But uh, when I went on my own, I honestly, I didn't even like, like certain kind of music, like corridos. Uh, but when I was there working in the fields, like, I had to listen to corridos. I had to connect with the community. So I learned um, certain slangs that I, that I used to connect with, with my coworkers. We spoke about corridos. I, so I had to learn like, some of the name of the songs or bands. And in that way, like slowly, but I, I feel like generally we made connections with the farm workers. And, and soon I had um, the opportunity to have drinks at their trailers where they lived. I would bring them to my brother's house and have some drinks. We share stories. And that's sort of like where I found out the, the fairness, of, the unfairness of the system, like how they lived, how people in the cities live. The kind of how the working conditions are in the cities, how the working conditions are in the fields, and all these ideas that, um, excuse me, that were like so like unfair. I was like, this is the things that I want to talk in my art. So that's I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. I went beyond it. No, that was question, that was but, perfect. But that's I how that good, I, yeah. um, you know, some of these people get really comfortable with the camera when I would take a picture. Before it was like, I would take pictures here and there. People were in the background, but. Recently, after I stopped working in the fields, people were more comf comfortable with me. People knew what I was doing. Some of them, I would bring sketches to the fields, and they would I would just pass them around so they could see them. Um, they would say, like, hey, when are, when are you going to take a picture of me? Have you drawn me yet? You know, <laughs> things like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's my relationship with, the, with these people. Uh, I hope um, it hasn't changed, you know, because I haven't really gone back to the fields except for um, Except for research, so, so yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'm just going to add one more point before we move on to Art of Elan, um, which is you know the the sort of symbols of the on the boxes themselves and the representation and even the colors too, because we were talking about it just recently about like the color choices and what it means to represent certain uh, aspects of the market and the consumption and the um, the corporate presentation of produce. And I also want to mention too, on this is his third, uh, I'll call it a mural, um, his third large piece. It's and he's second, working, second. oh, second one, sorry. And he's working on his third right now. Um, and the third one uh, is called Citrus Fresh? Supreme Fresh. Supreme Fresh, <laughs> thank you, Supreme Fresh. And I said, oh, there's Supreme, but where's Fresh? And he said, it's everywhere. <laughs> and I think that's a really important thing to, to recognize. If you look at the boxes, you'll start to see fresh everywhere and sort of the, the language that are used on the boxes to represent the produce that is being picked. Um, I don't know if you want to make any sort of comments about like the colors or the, the shapes that you sometimes leave free. Like, you know, if we look at I'm pink, obviously you're painting around that, right? Yeah. And you're highlighting it. And then you've also used collages too, you know, even leaving these types of, mm -hmm. of um, parts open. But it's, it's just part of the, um, I think it's just part of the conversation between farm workers uh, and the agribusiness. I feel like the agribusiness, I let the agribusiness be represented by their own labels and brands and colors that are on the, that are on the boxes. And I represent, I try to represent the farm workers through the mark makings. 
And uh, as, as I go along, I make decisions, like I was saying, like I don't know if I would be able to have an assistant because I don't even know how the piece is gonna look. Uh, I don't even know what the next move would be. I have a general idea, but whenever I'm on a piece, I, I make decisions as I go. And uh, sometimes, because of compositions, I have to cover some, some of the colors. Or I, I have to leave it sometimes so that they can interact with the drawings. Like, I feel like this part is part of the box, but this is collage and this is drawing. So it's always this um, interaction between the colors, the brands, and, and the black and white from my drawings. And the people. Right, right. Right. Yeah. What about the red thread? It's part of the box, yeah. This red thread that goes all the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part of the boxes, yeah. Well, part of the boxes? You mm -hmm. didn't do that? I didn't do that, no. It's part of the boxes, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you discard the size when you stop, or you add, add on the carton? Or oh, you it's. Decide the size first. Well, this size, I actually do that. I sometimes I put a box and I keep adding boxes. But this 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 piece, uh, this size came from the previous one, which is exactly the size of one of the walls at Long Beach Museum of Art, because I created that piece. Um, during, a res during a second residency I did at the museum. And I just saw this wall that had a platform um, next to it. And I was like, this is perfect for like a big piece that would just fit that space. And then in addition to that piece on the wall, because it had a platform, I created an installation of little paintings um, that represented the produce, which were, were, were aligned along, the li along this line all the way through. But yeah. Sometimes I add, sometimes it's just a size. <laughs>